purpose themselves. So that's, I think, what Belgium needs to go for here. Yeah, Mexico, definitely a little bit of the favorite here, but maybe we have a little bit of the people's keys to winning notes. So if you're going to be uh, winning these, you have to find your momentum and be able to hold it. But there's a lot of good players on this Belgium team that maybe go a little bit under the radar. Everybody knows Thomas, but you still got some decently big names here, and they're going to have to t step up, take advantage, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, there's a lot of players here that have improved a lot during what I like to call the COVID era. A lot of yep. a lot of players have definitely improved a lot. So we have uh, Thomas. I'm going to butcher a couple of these names probably, so I apologize. Um, Aswiz has also been pretty good lately. We got Yuki, who's been shuffling between Hornets and Midnight Wasps. He's a key piece there that's getting better. Uh, we got him. He started in, uh, I believe it was Pandala. I love then, that um, name, dude. Yeah. <laughs> just goes by Got in the... Uh... Yeah. In the actual I matches. That was wrong, but I think it was there Pandala. They had a very good first season, and then he's kind of moving up now. And then Blackdown has been... Blackdown's a big surprise for me, actually, for Belgium. He, uh, He's also on Midnight Wasps now, and he lately has actually kind of been going in. Like He's gotten a lot better, so I'm excited to see if he can try to do anything here to help Belgium out, because they are definitely the our, underdogs, as you said. Of course, our perspective, Sig. No newcomer to the scene, long-time veteran. I don't know if Belgium's actually played... 8D before in a World Cup. I don't think they have, so I imagine this is actually the debut a lot of a lot of these players. Yeah, definitely, because I know in the past there's always been like a Benelux or something has been a common yeah. theme across all Mario Karts as well, but it's nice to see a full actual Belgium squad. So yeah, it's nice. Let's just see how this goes. Yeah, now we're probably going to have to hope that there's a shock here for their sake, because we've seen a lot of Belgium throughout most of the race. I believe that's probably a early top two. Maybe not, because Thomas is actually back here. I don't have any reason to think it wouldn't be Mexico yeah, first. It looks like Ghost well. is going down. This is the end of the race. Could be, potentially. No, no. He gets starred at the very end, but there's a lot of them up here still. Yeah, I think it's been like a pretty solid first race for Belgium. Especially because yeah, uh, Mexico see? was host, too, and got the track pick. So, uh, yeah, that was, was actually an average clutch race. for Kevo. Because yeah, there were Kevo... so many. Sorry, this is going to happen. <laughs> no, that's fine. There were so many Belgian members coming up there at the end. I was like a little nervous for Mexico that they were going to kind of toss the start. Yeah, that was a nice way to hold on the four. If you're Belgium, though, that's not a bad first race. The other team is host. They got a lot of top spots, most likely. Pick Warrior Stadium. It's a tough track to break through. And speaking of Kevo, too, Kevo is one of the players who has individually gotten so much better in a very short period of time. Like, he's. His lines, when you watch them, are so crisp, and he was not really well known. Like, even six months, a year ago, he wasn't extremely known. He was in KA and kind of carrying Carnita Asada. But, like, now when he's playing in the high divs or the big stakes wars, he's still just pounding those front spots over and over again. So good on him for getting improving so much over such a short period of time. Yeah, he was a player that I wanted to talk about going into this, and, you know, getting getting the dub is an easy place to uh, f I find the time, I guess. Uh yeah, as you mentioned, the COVID era is like what you would say. As horrible as the events in the world and stuff, it's provided a time for a lot of a growth in terms of like, it, you know, indoor activities like this. So a lot of players on the come up. He is definitely one of the names to uh, really consider when talking about players who are trending towards the sky, quite frankly. Yeah, that's a very nice depth piece for Mexico, too, because Mexico's really strong, but sometimes you've had to throw in a couple of players that they maybe weren't too happy with, and now you throw in Kevo there, and that's just another presence that's just going to be pounding at the front. That's his game plan. He's not really yeah, a bagger. A he just likes now. to pound. They have a full lineup to be scared of. So Kevo holding on to first. It was looking like a pretty good start for Sig, but not really going to be able to hold on to that. I don't think that green's actually going to land. So, really good stuff out of Mexico to begin this one. Yeah, they look like they're controlling a decent amount of the front. I'm going to assume that is one of them stopping to be with the Belgian member at the back. I'd assume that's one each. The yeah. teams, we see Thomas also kind of lurking near the back with the Roy there. And I don't know what to think about that really because I've, I don't think this is really a controversial opinion that Thomas is kind of like the player on this team that you want in the front the most. He's the one that has like all those experiences with World Friends Star, the team that's won six MKUs in a row. Obviously that streak's been broken recently, but he's got this big match experience, maybe more than anybody in this lobby. 
and that matters. But if he's going to be bagging and stuff, obviously that means that the rest of the team's going to have to pick up the slack and do their job up front. But as we can see right now, there's just a ton of them in mid the mid to the back spots. Yeah, I'm going to expect what Belgium's playing here. I'm going to expect, like, Thomas is known as the best bagger, but his game plan, I assume, is going to try to be to push the front most of the war, because Mexico is definitely very strong in the front, and you won't be able to rely on shocks every race to break that up. It just doesn't yeah. happen where you can pull them that often. Taking a look at Canoso, we have a little bit of an explanation of as to why Mexico was able to just run. I think luckily for uh, Belgium, or luckily for Mexico, the efforts in the back, yeah, Thomas was up front after all, the efforts in the back did not prove to be very effective. No shock was pulled, and Mexico is just going to be able to take advantage of the mismatch up front and get another really solid race to start this one off. Yeah, starting strong is definitely something Mexico is used to, so they're going to need to keep this going. And as that pull for Canoso too, that was also a really clutch pull. Not even just having the blue, but he also had a bill in pockets. As you know, only three bills can be in play. There's a lot of Belgium at the back that gave them less opportunity to pull the bullet bills. So that was pretty clutch that he also had a bill there in his pocket to prevent them from being pulled as much. Yeah, so again, I know that you are very familiar with a lot of the players in the Team Mexico lineup. What exactly do you... I, I think I saw Cora playing this match as well. Well, as Ricky, yes. I think it's a staple of the main lineup. What is what makes you enjoy warring with them? Uh, <laughs> uh, Cora and Rike, they're uh, they're fun guys to war around. It's nice that they can have a pretty solid English too, helps the communication's not really an issue. Uh, the thing for Cora, I think Cora's main role in uh, Mexico is probably to think of like how they're gonna make the big play or if they get the shocks, use the shocks. Because Cora is the kind of player where he doesn't mind getting his hands a little dirty. He's the guy who will, if something, like we have a shock or something, he would just think of something quickly to do that maybe most other people wouldn't think of on the team. He kind of has those like unique ideas that he'll come up with and uh, it can really help the team sometimes. So I think his role is going to try to be to do that kind of stuff to make the other players who are going to be punching the front consistently to score high like Kevo and Chibi and stuff like that. I think that's a really important role. I would say that one of uh, AD's strengths as a competitive game, you know, is the whole decision-making aspect. And when you have a player with really high processing speed, that's what's going to make some of these exchanges just so fluid and it comes across as unstoppable to the opponent sometimes. That being said, back on the race, I know it's RMC, but we got a top two, but that horn is unfortunately going to be burned. We'll have to see yeah, and then the blue shell is also coming now, too. We're yeah. see if uh, God will be able to stop in time, but don't think, I think he's just going to eat it. Well, it's horns come in pairs, so you never know. This kind of a, yeah, I was thinking that this is kind of a dangerous transaction there for Sig to take that cut. Kind of have to trail this, and he doesn't, and gets taken down by Ricky immediately for it. Yeah, and Kevo pulls off the horn there, but I don't think it connects. So Mexico is top two now. Shot you comes see a in. in play. The Roy I did not think dodge. I saw Thomas. No, it's Black Down coming up. So he's probably going to have a really good heat immediately goes into a star. I don't know if I agree with the decision, but we'll see. Yeah, I would if think he doesn't that... have shrooms behind and that star, then that was, I don't think that's a good decision at all. But I mean, we'll he came out of the bill, he has the right? He came out yeah. of the bill, so I, I don't imagine he does. We'll see. I imagine a lot of Belgium's going to be on the come up right now. That's a really good pull for Sig. As long as he doesn't get hit, he should be able to stick. Oh, God. and speak of the devil. The commentator's curse coming at a full force there. And we yeah, do see looks like getting bottom three. bottom three. So that's going to be enough. Uh, okay, they did actually grind, though. I okay. Guess. Yeah. Okay. Good Good. Good on you, Belgium. They definitely yeah, held that Yeah, the star race. makes more sense now. Because Thomas was up front. I wasn't certain that they had first on lockdown. But it makes me feel a little bit better. Maybe he did it to maybe protect Thomas, protect himself, and uh, shield off that top two. And they were ultimately able to hold it. Yeah, that, that that's huge. Honestly, because uh, another bad race there would have just could have potentially started a steamroll yeah as mexico can do as well they're a very polarized team i think one of the interesting things really about this group also is obviously you have france at the top and that is a one second there was a bug on my computer that just randomly appeared out of nowhere so i'm gonna let you do the commentary while i have to dispel this uh creepy little monster so i will be right back all right. Well, as Rookie goes to de defeat that bug, uh, 
Mexico will be coming in this race with a 28 point lead. So they haven't really ran away yet. Belgium kept that race even. And they are going to get their TikTok pick, which is a pretty decent pick. You get top two, four, you can take the handle in a first. And if you want second and fourth, then you can start with some coins and get some shrooms and come up. Uh, it's a bit risky with second though. Second can get bumped a lot. So we'll see if how they work around that. Or maybe the guy in second will go on the left path and take the tight box to order to give Thomas a second place box and first is also something you can do. So we'll see what they plan to do here at the start. Looks like everyone just planned to go down the middle. Hopefully there's no hopefully they don't bump each other off. And we do see the Roy back here, so I do believe Thomas did in fact get bumped off. I'll go ahead and hop in for now while Rookie is de uh, defeating the foe uh, at, at that bay. sounds good. <laughs> uh, we'll see Sigorn here just chilling, bagging, why not? Uh, and yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, so far from what we've been able to see at least, Sigorn at least, well, happy to play the role of bagger for now. I'm here. All right, welcome back. You're good. And, and I go, you, I, Eric, I go, I I go bye bye. <laughs> nice, yeah. It's just a correction there. Uh, Thomas actually is still keeping first. I don't know why I thought Thomas was still a Roy when it's Ghost mains Roy, so that's my apologies. So we do still have Thomas holding first. He may be getting double redded out here, though, by Core, aka Mo Lassus. Yeah, and again, uh, obviously in this game, it's a game of mismatches. You want to have as many people really shielding you as possible. First alone is never really going to be able to cover it all, no matter how quick you are in some instances. And that's a good example of it there. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> he gets uh, hit, uh, Thomas somehow tanked his way through it. Yeah, that wasn't the worst exchange, but losing that horn definitely does hurt. Case yeah, especially the if the blue out. comes up. <laughs> that ghost is a really good pull, and he goes into it immediately, but falls off. I can't imagine he's getting anything good. Everybody's in dodges. So, a lot of Belgium in the back, but they do have first at the very least. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that Cora still didn't hold on to first there? I don't. I didn't see any movement, so I feel pretty good in saying that. But we'll have to okay. see. Blue was being held. We don't know if that proves anything. There was a lot of Belgium back there. I think Thomas. Actually, no. Yeah, yeah, it was Cora up there. So, winning race for Belgium, despite uh, the temporary top two scare there, able to get rid of a uh, Canoso and. Again, I think Kenosa was ready to block that item, but just it came at an inopportune time, and even though he got the horn off, it was too late to defend himself. And again, races like these are keeping Belgium in the match, which obviously is me for Mexico, you don't really want them to feel like they have any hope, but sometimes these teams are strong enough where you can't really count them out, and they are going to make it quite annoying to do so. Yeah, exactly. Belgium was, uh, I believe they were the ninth seed, so the first team in the third tier that was floated. So they're definitely not something uh, that you, you can joke around with. They are a very strong team. And yeah, with that horn, it's unfortunate for Canoso because there is the bit of delay when you press the button and the horn actually activates, like just the animation for the horn. That got him. And because of that, it also broke all of his triple bananas too because of that animation delay. So that sucked because he had a lot of avenues to protect Korra and first there and keep their top two. Luckily, Korra was able to hold down the first still, but yeah, just a few frames earlier and that horn would have been very good. Yeah, and as good as of a, as good of an item as horns are in, in war specifically for the whole holding aspect, one of their weaknesses is it is a defense item that you have to time and you can't just trail it behind you. So sometimes there are... Uh, unfortunate uh, sequences such as that but luckily for his sake core is able to hold on to first and at least uh make the bull bad yeah so it didn't look like there were that many shrooms at the start here and the red does connect on two people getting one apiece so i think the big question here is does cora hold on you didn't see a lot of shrooms which obviously helps the cause for him staying in first but again this is, a, this is a track that I think many would agree is one of the best runners in the game. It just really depends on that beginning because there are cuts early, which kind of distinguishes it from something more difficult to break up the top spots on, you know, like Mario Stadium. That's 
I guess the poster track for this. Yeah, we do see a head spin out near the front a couple times actually, and Ghost was hit out early when he was in like 2-3, so there could be Belgium pushing up at the front now, if that other head that spun out near the front was Korra. Yeah, so we'll and I guess keep the, eyes out on that. Yeah, the, the fun thing that's going on right now is, even though like Mexico still has a firm grip on the lead, this is still close enough to where Belgium really could make a big impact with just one race, and if they get that, things start to become scary for Mexico because you get a significant portion of the way in, and there's a lot of them in the upper to mid pack. Yeah, I think Belgium has pretty much everything except maybe Cora up there still. So yeah. we're gonna see if there maybe could be a shock in play that hasn't oh, felt what? like the no, banking's been no. too hard. Oh, okay, they're getting the TS. Come in play. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I always prefer the second set rather than the target shock. Yeah. Because if you get, or they can just or have two and do, just both. do both. <laughs> Why not just double down? Exactly. Uh, they do get Chippy into boxes though, so we'll see how that works. He does pull the plant, which could be a new Okay, interesting. Boris now in first, which, you know, you see so many of Belgium getting TS, you naturally think that's going to be Mexico coming up, but they have a little bit of an opportunity to keep this close. There's a lot of them in the upper mid pack again. I'm. That's a good. That's a really that's good, a race for good race. Whose for shock Belgium. actually was that? I think those were double Belgium shocks, honestly. That would, uh... Because Sig was over been... the glider, which is really weird. A really weird timing decision. Actually, I... yeah. No, I, I'm assuming the first one was probably Mexico to get, uh, Belgium. It's I don't awful. think those are both Mexico shocks, because the second it... shock got yeah. most of Mexico after the second set, which is, w honestly, might be the best shock spot in the game, because yeah. you're forced to go slow on the stairs, and getting the drift can be a pain. And then also, if you want an item for the rest of the race, you have to commit to a very unoptimal path if you want an item for the end of the race. Yeah, so, I'm just going to chalk this up to Thomas doing shock shenanigans again, because I don't know. I didn't see him up there until the very end. We know that he's one of the more clutch shock pullers. We watched him in many MKU finals go back when absolutely necessary and deliver on that front. The the interesting thing there for me is like when the first one the first shock is coming, you think it's a Mexico shock. I believe it still probably was. Sig that actually landed was. a boomerang on his teammate over the gap. I don't know if that was intentional. I don't think it was since it appeared to bounce off a wall, but it almost created a chance of them dodging that way. I still don't... Like, there's too many uh, parts of the equation to assume that they did it intentionally. I think it was probably just a Mexico shock and that somebody on Belgium went Belgium. under the radar. Yeah, and dodged with another one and then used it when they passed second set. You never know on that one, but I'm all for it considering the point margin is now down to 10. And one of the things that I was a little nervous about going into this tournament was... Uh, I felt that the top eight teams were very defined, and that is an unfortunate reality for the group stage because only eight teams are going to make it. So if the teams are clearly defined, you won't, you don't really expect to see many upsets. But even though uh, Canada and Netherlands came down to the very last race earlier to see another two-three seeding match being incredibly close, it makes you wonder who's going to get the upset because. It feels like it should be happening. You know, you have Chile coming up against England, who was the one seed, but actually had a potential loss. But you never know, because there's a lot of effective matches that are going to have a ton of meeting, with this one being no exception. Yeah, I agree with you. In the past, it's usually just been the top eight, you know, kind of always the same. But the teams have been doing a really good job. Netherlands also had the lead on USA for a long time as well. And as you said, the last yeah. race, it came down to Canada. That could have went either way. Unfortunately, yeah. it didn't end in their way. Thankfully for me, but unfortunate <laughs> for them. Yeah. All right, so Yuki goes into a star. Sig is still holding his. Makes me think that there probably isn't anything going on for Belgium at the moment. Maybe they're just trying to cover multiple possibilities coming out from Team Mexico. I still have a lot of reason to believe that Mexico is holding on to a lot of these top spots here. But we'll have to see, because it seems to be a decently mixed pack. Chooses to activate the star right now. It looks like no shock is really going to be happening with t both teams just trying to psych each other out. Maybe at the very end, a blue is appearing, but immediately holds by uh, Cora. So never mind. We know who's in first now, and this may be a top two even for Mexico, which would be a really good response. And wow, a lot of action at the end. 
I think that's, that's at least a top three set. They better hope that wasn't Mexico in four. If it was not... So we Dare were talking street. about Kevo earlier, right? Yeah, I was literally just going to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, on pace for 144. Yeah, I mean, can you... Can't really stop him, it seems like. So, again, another really good race for Mexico. Very uh, reminiscent of yesterday, where they had a very strong showing on Shoals right before the halfway mark to nearly tie it up against France. In this case, though, uh, a little bit of a sigh of relief to kind of extend the gap and give themselves a little bit of a more comfortable scenario going into the second half. Obviously, you don't want to be too close, but it feels like Mexico's in control, but Belgium just will not go away. Yeah, I agree with that. It feels like this has been... Right, cool. Need the perspective also, but welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, you're all with us still. I see uh, Twisted Mansion on the uh, live stream at the moment. We'll be getting the uh, up to date POV in just a minute. There it is. So, 24 point lead for Mexico at the halfway mark. It's probably not what they were hoping for going into it, but there's still a lot of things to be happy about. Right now, if you're Belgium, like you're still very much in this, and all you can really hope for is a chance against these teams that are seated above you. So, I think that they're in a spot that is not too bad. I'd agree with that. We don't see anybody stopping too hard for the shock right now. So I think both teams might at least be a little confident in what they're in what they're going for. Yeah. Uh, we do see that Ghost is up there with the Roy pushing to the front. Yeah. That was a little bit of a flub on Sig's part. Uh, he wanted to obviously consider get... Oh, Blue's coming in also. This pack is incredibly close right now. I think that it has to be a bunch of Mexico up front because the Roy did kind of dip to the right right before it. But no shock is going to happen almost certainly. <laughs> Funny, the Blue takes him from 1 to 11. There is a lot of Mexico back here, though. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Sig uh, probably not getting as many items as he was hoping for, but... Well, we'll just have to see what goes on up front. Maybe a switch to Canoso could be a little bit more informative. We'll have to see. But. Yeah, we're splitting the back spots, couple, couple. Uh, Ghost did get hit there, so Ghost is also back there now. All right, and this is a really tight pack. It's Thomas up front. I don't, I, I think it's probably mixed. Oh, that banana. He's not going to be able to avoid it. Maybe hitting Yuki also. So bottom yeah, spot. Yeah, at least he traded Kinoza. with Yuki, at least. The very least. Yeah. It was kind of hard to see what's truly going on there, but Belgium walks away with a 135. I think it's probably close to even because of the bottom, but still they're hanging around. It feels like the races they're winning, like you almost don't believe that they're happening until you see the results. So we don't have the... That we don't have the view truly to uh, see that they're getting first on all these races and it's making it feel like Mexico's in control but that's truly not the case right now yeah I found that very interesting too that race how there was honestly no one even seemed to even have a thought about contesting for a shock that race so both teams must have been pretty confident in what they had going but you don't see that too often on a track like Twisted Mansion that has an absolutely devastating shock point yeah you would think that the strategy on TM is kind of pseudo bagging track, but it seemed like both teams opted to not do that. And I don't know, it's, it's a choice they made, but and I guess I guess uh, Sig did have a chance to get himself into a top spot right there. It's just his team was not going to dodge really at any point, so they had to be comfortable with that. And he was pulling some single streams in 12th because of just how close it was. So, hey, it's ah. his decision. Still didn't get punished a ton for it, so just gotta take what you can get, really. So, yeah, so early, I believe that was Cavo taken out there, which can be pretty huge, as he's very powerful at the front. I mean, let's let's call it how it how it is. He's been a problem this whole this whole t event, really, for really any team facing him. But in no, this match is no exception. Good on Chibi to... Oh, I never mean not good on Chibi. That was Canoso that we're following, not a Sig. 
yeah, taking the double there from his teammate, but grand scheme, don't think that's going to change too much, thankfully. Yeah, I think if you're Belgium, the good thing right now is I want to say that Thomas is probably still up there. Never, mi nope, never mind. Thomas never mind. is indeed in the <laughs> there back. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah, fought might... better than that, but there has to be somebody from Belgium up there, you would think. Yeah, as you because we'll see what happens with this bomb, too. This yeah, bomb this is... Sort of depending on the direction it is thrown. I f yeah, I don't... Oh my god, that green is... <laughs> it's just a kind of scary room. Blue's coming in, so we're going to get some answers in a second. It feels Flying like these no guys point. just... Oh, man, Canoso is just de yeah, decimated Kenoso there. Yeah, gets hit off there, too. And uh, we won't get our answers because of that as well. But we do see yeah, Ghost has moved up into second place. So Mexico, at the very least, is 2-4. We don't really know who's first right now. It would be huge if it was Mexico. Fire is them. coming out. I don't know if it's actually going to land a hit on anybody. Whoever's in first just dictates like the entirety of like what to expect for the rest of the war right now. My gut's telling me it's Belgium, but I'm not entirely certain. This red is going to be an awkward scenario right now. Probably not going to want to risk it. Maybe now, though. And Ghost will be able to block Ooh. it. Oh, Sig. And he gets the slide, the shroom slide there, setting him up for not a good shortcut. Yeah, that was a little risky. I'm not sure if it was worth it. Who got first? It's Chibi. Ooh, that's a gut punch. Yeah, that is definitely a gut punch. Uh, for Sig, though, that mishap, everyone except one person that passed him were his teammates. So that yeah. was only a two-point mistake in the grand scheme of things, although it looked worse than that. Yeah. So he shouldn't get himself too worried about that if he is, because most likely that's not going to change the outcome of the war. He's got to keep going and start the next race fresh. For sure. But in Belgium was doing such a good job kind of containing Chibi up to this point. Obviously a very strong runner, but... You can only do so much sometimes, and unfortunately, they kind of let him get his opportunity there. His teammates backed him up. Really tough to get 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 the, get him out when that's going to happen. If you provide him support, he's going to do his part to hold on to it. And now he's staying up front. They get Desert to try to reset things. But with GP3 arriving now, they're going to have to make some magic happen sooner than later. But... I think the benefits here is that a track like this is going to allow probably the best bagger on their team to actually get back there and make an impact while still being able to have an impact on the front in this race. Yeah, this is probably going to be the most important race. Uh, honestly, even more important than the last three. This could determine the outcome of the war. I know Mexico isn't really a super bagging heavy team. So getting a track like this and getting a big race here, we're still, you got Thomas, you got a couple other people too. That, uh, a lot of... Midnight Wasps or Hornets players are also good at playing from the back, and they got a few there as well. So I do feel like bagging tracks should swing in Belgium's favor, so we'll see if they can take advantage of that here and get a big race. Like, Try to they, de they definitely should, but wait, did Chibi DC? I think he just stopped. Okay, like, uh, it's desert. Like, it doesn't yeah. make sense, because it's like, oh man, I gotta get out first, and now Ghost is just in yeah. first. So, I don't know. The way really he's, the fact, he was like kind of horizontal when he froze is a bit concerning. Yeah, kind of just a yeah. Weird angle, but right, we'll see. Blue is coming in. That may hold some of the answers right now. Nobody wants to stay up front. Good back on Sig, actually. I mean, he's going to stay in first after all that. And now you have that's, to wonder uh, if like, desert for you. Yeah, I mean, are they even in shock range at this point? Yeah, this back is pretty tight now. Unless somebody already had the shock now. Yeah, we see it. Like, everybody's stopping there. right now, so I don't, I'm not convinced, really. Yeah, we haven't seen many bills either uh, being popped, so I think people might be holding them. We might have the triple bill holds right here. Increasing yeah. the chance of getting the shock. Oh, yeah, and if you're really far in the back, sometimes you can almost make it nearly a coin flip. It feels like if you're going to pull it from a double. In that instance of triple bills, Bomb, I think, is going to go back here. Lands the hit, but he's going to go down for it. I don't know if I like the decision, but you may be able to pull Shrooms as a result. Thomas is set up well, though. Yeah, he's first in a star right now, so that's kind of hype for that. Yeah. Okay, now Thomas is stopped. There's a... I, I'm so lost on this race, honestly. I'm trying to... <laughs> okay, there. that makes more sense. I don't know why he didn't get two boxes there, though. Yeah, that's going to be unfortunate and hurts a lot, especially the star. Like, a star is cool and all, but Shrooms... It's not unfortunate. Shrooms that was, that, that that was his better. decision right there. Yeah. You gotta watch out. And Again, that doesn't tell us a whole ton. It could have been a Belgium shock. It could have just been them being aware of the situation. Again, we just have one of these packs that it's almost impossible to really make any takeaways for. 
Yeah, we a see lot a of Belgians Belgian back. back here. Uh, I believe that was a Mexico flag in 12. We got this yeah. second to see it. That at least keeps them alive for the time being, but this isn't looking super promising unless they really pulled some stuff up front. Nope, they didn't really. Uh, yeah, my gut's telling me that was probably Mexico having the shock, and they were kind of because they're kind of just like, well, we have the lead here. Uh, even race is pretty much a winning race for us. So we're just going to use this before they have a chance to do anything. And yeah. uh, it worked out well. They even won the race by a bit. So now they're kind of demanding, got a pretty demanding lead with uh, these last three races here. It's going to be really tough for Belgium. They, I believe they really needed their big race there. So yeah, we'll that's... see what they can do. They're not out of it completely. I'm really surprised that the shock was potentially held that long. Again, we don't know if they, like, like you would you would assume it's been held long if uh, Thomas is stopping in second to try to get a dodge and stuff. But again, uh, Mexico didn't really have to do anything perfect there. Like they have the sixty point buffer right now. They just got to make sure that anything that they can do to really convenience any opportunity that Belgium has of pulling something meaningful. It, you just got to make sure that all those opportunities are shot down. Okay, that well that Chibi. answers the question. Chibi did DC yeah. with that weird horizontal placement. It looked, it <laughs> yeah. looked incredibly suspect. It so. did look very suspect, you're right. Uh, we, uh, uh, getting the Excite Bike here, wheelies as I like to call it. Yep. Uh, definitely a bullet dodge by Belgium as uh, Mexico was picking DK Jungle, which I know is a very heavy favorite for a lot of the Dawn members, which make up the majority of Team Mexico. So that could have been the nail there, so that was lucky to not get that track pick. Sure. Uh, again, I think this is the track that you kind of want when starting a lot in the back, not really necessarily because it's a bagger, but because, you know, coin advantage is a real thing here. The layouts are different. You don't know exactly what you're going to get every single time, and it can be inconvenient at times. So having all the having that as a natural advantage if you're starting in the back is kind of nice. You're going to have to watch out, Sig. Yeah, I don't think you had the angle there gonna get taken out for a bomb there but the good news for him is that he should be able to recover fine coin council can just say okay yeah the coin counts fine the pack is still close and he's in a low spot yeah maybe pull get himself in triple shrooms or something that'd be help shooting at the eighth place box though kind of cursed yeah he will get yep. the greens and pops it on his teammate as well you really do not like to see yeah i'm starting to think that the shock may be like the only solution to really keep belgium in this one but we'll it see it is looking that way but we still have a lap to go. Oh my god, the 8th place box takes no prisoners. <laughs> yeah. or, hey, it takes all I don't know, taking all the prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is going down yeah. too. This is rough. We know he's not pulling a dodge in 8th, so... Yeah. Not that it's impossible, it's just... Yeah. Reading oh, the room right now. We connect on Ghost, so if that was a yeah. back from first, Belgium is holding on to first. If that that wasn't could a be huge sign. for them, especially if Mexico can't really do anything with all them jam-packed here. The, yeah. the, the pack items are not going to be great for them, but it seems they're making do. Can Belgium come back at the end, though? We'll see. Doesn't get a box. I yeah, think Kevo a lot of the cut either. Yeah. Like, I'm not convinced that's particularly good, but I think they did get first. We'll have to see. They yeah. did. Yuki is keeping the dream alive. You yeah. wanted a bigger race than that, but like you're at least on the board now. Yuki holding down that first place. I don't know. I'm not really going to put much uh, excitement into that. All I see now is that a pretty even race occurred. They're still going to be down 60 and with two to go. That means top fives are now uh, officially now a necessary. must. Yes. Yeah. The first place, though, does keep the dream alive there, clutching it out. It's not... Technically. It, it's a tough dream. It's a tough dream. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> yeah. it is yeah. at the moment. It's not the most improbable thing that would ever happen. But, yeah, the clock is really ticking now. Yeah, with the even race, you still see uh, Belgium going to bagging tracks. As they may have come to the same conclusion that I did, where they should have the upper hand on the bagging tracks. Well, I, I don't like do. the pick, personally. Because Cheezan has a reputation. Two shocks, right? Oh, yeah, or You're three. Yeah, but like it, if there's one shock, it's like, okay, 50-50 that we're the team that's using it, right? But if there's two shocks, I feel like it's only like a 25% chance that you're really getting both. And if Mexico can just get their hands on one and make sure that somebody's getting a good spot, like that, it, that significantly decreases the amount of options at your disposal because you have to top five at this point. There's no other way about it. 
So giving them, I guess, more of an opportunity, I guess. Yeah, that also goes to show that they don't think they have the ability to top five on an actual hard runner as well with that track pick. So that yeah. should give Mexico some confidence seeing that on the board as well. But uh, it was definitely they thought that's their best shot and they went for it. Uh, they didn't get the track pick, so we're on Electrodrome here, so we'll see if they're able to do anything. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing to know is I don't think Belgium's eliminated if they're not able to come back here. But it's going to be incredibly difficult because they would have to beat France for that to happen, and we all know the story of how good France is. We watched them completely annihilate Mexico in the second half of the war yesterday. And Mexico is a pretty good team as we're seeing right now. But the thing that is interesting is what happens with Italy and Eastern Europe, teams that may have a shot at this. And I don't think that they've played Mexico yet. If they can maybe pull an upset, you never know what's going to truly happen in this group. And that could potentially be Belgium's ticket back into this. But obviously, you don't want to rely on other teams to do uh, your uh, win or get the win against Mexico for you. And the plus minus is going to matter, too. So they need to at least get something. But Mexico looks yeah, like they have no plans Mexico of that. Mexico shock. Yeah, that's that's probably the nail for sure. Uh, it's going to take a miracle for Belgium to get themselves out of this one, unless someone somehow dodged with the shock as well, but it doesn't seem like the case. Yeah, I don't so think it's going to happen again. Yeah. But Mexico's pounding the front right now. Yeah, it's it's kind of a bummer, because Belgium actually had gotten set for, like, for what seems like the first time, really, in quite a bit. They had a ton of people up there. It seems like only Mexico was coming up with their bills and stuff. But, yeah, they, there's no way that they don't just completely control what's going on up there, and this one is looking to be about lights out in another 10 seconds. Yeah, Thomas was also hit off there, I believe, so he's yeah. probably getting 12th, which that alone makes it, I think that alone makes it over. Yeah, so Mexico is going to not make it to groups, but pretty much make it a very high possibility. I don't, I don't want to say certainty, because there are still matches that they have to play, but getting a win against the three seed off your chest like that that that's big that's big for this team especially after a pretty demotivating loss in the second half yesterday against france yeah they came back this war they must have talked it over like what happened in the second half we were fine the first match this match they've been pretty solid throughout all 12 races which again is something that they have had difficulty with in the past so overcoming that was definitely huge for them and if they can continue that for the rest of the groups pretty confident that they should uh make their way and they will cross over with the group d i believe which means if they do make it they'll end up with at the moment it looks most likely like it would be spain which uh that would that's always a fun matchup but still yeah. plenty left to be played in every group so i think spain plays chile tomorrow and if they win that they're probably handling that group the interesting thing to notice about group d however is Obviously, you know, Spain beat England yesterday. That's our biggest upset so far. A lot of people may not call it a big upset, but it was a two over a one. And that makes it, it, you know, when you beat the one seed of your group as a two, you're effectively stealing the seed, right? Like you're taking it from them because now you're going to be the team that, unless something goes wrong, is going to be projected to make it out of your group at first. And that was an interesting bump coming in for Sig. But what we have up next on MKC, I believe we have some MK Wii matches to do here for a few hours coming up. But we will have England against Chile at 3 on the MKC stream if you're looking for more MK8 after this. And the interesting thing about that is that it's not a 2 versus 3 match, but because England's loss yesterday to Spain had occurred, it effectively is. And that makes you think that maybe again we're going to see a third match in a row, you know, Canada and the Netherlands happening again, where very much... Uh, the groups are completely on the line, really. Because, yeah. obviously, England has to be a little bit nervous going in. Like, they should feel confident, but, like, all right, we cannot afford to drop this one. Yeah, I want to make a couple points about that war as well, as this one is mathematically over. Yeah. Uh, the England-Chile war, I know, uh, like, Chile, everyone knows Chile has been absolutely Rinders. grinding scrims more than any other national team. They're one of the only national teams that try to stay semi-active outside of World Cup months as well. So Chile is the one team, like they know themselves well, they know their strengths, they know their weaknesses. 
uh, on paper, England has definitely way more star power, and yeah, they're definitely no. the favorites for that war. But I'm it really keeps you on your to toes. See what it yeah, it keeps you on your toes because they are likely much more. Uh, I don't know. I I don't want to say that they care more because obviously every team puts a lot of effort into this, but you really have to worry about a team that's so active, plays almost multiple wars every day. Like, and, and Chile will play anybody. They, they don't fear anybody. They look for high-level wars all the time. So if you're a Division One level national team pulling up against Team Chile, this is nothing new to them. Maybe they don't win every match, but they're used to it. Yeah, Chile likes to kind of play the trap game as well, or is what I what I like to call it is, they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. They're very aggressive with their items. They will go for the shocks a lot. And before you know it, you can just fall in and they can take, it kind of feels like they are controlling the, kind of just controlling the war, the atmosphere. And before you know it, sometimes they can just build a lead. So Chile's definitely a pretty wild card team. So England versus Chile should be a really good match. I, f I feel like Chile's been practicing months on months for this very specific moment here yeah. so i'm really interested to see what they can pull out against england who has always been a very strong team every year and again that's coming up next on mkc but to close this one off belgium getting at least a you know pride race two three five six seven eight i think it's gonna be a nice probably plus 16 to 20 on the stat sheet there maybe not that much but solid enough keeping it under 100 which was definitely something that was in danger of happening so we'll be seeing that happening soon or, or uh, the england and chile match good show not the best showing for belgium but they kept it respectable for the most part it was still very much a game at halftime and again if you're belgium this is tough but you're just gonna have to do your best against france maybe hope that you get some help in other aspects and Watch your, watch your differential. Try to really dominate every other, every other team that you're playing because in the end, if Mexico does drop another game, that's what you're going to have to fall back on. Yeah, for sure. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the stream over now, but... Yeah, we're going to be we're transitioning in just All a right. minute. <laughs> I'm so, so awkward. <laughs> I don't know if you have any final words, but I think that's uh, all we really have for this match. Yeah, I'd say uh, it was a pretty well game overall. Mexico did pull through at the end, and uh, you should stay tuned. There's some really good matches coming up here on EGTV and as well as MKC. And I would just like to uh, thank you guys again for giving me a chance to come back and do this. I didn't feel too confident, but uh, any feedback is appreciated for sure. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and uh, just pat yourself on the back because everybody, you're a legend. And sometimes we just need to remind ourselves that we're all grinders. You're, you're sick, all right. You're sick, by the way. With that, with that being said, <laughs> Germany and Greece, MKWE coming up next on uh, next here. And of course, if you're also looking for other matches, you got England and Chile on MKC, but also MK Wii, even another option, LTA in Ireland, I think, over on MK Boards. Don't quote me on that for sure, but it is certainly a possibility, so keep that in mind. I think that's all we have right now. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back.